What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 4 of a story where Izuku became the Shadow Monarch. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 4. Chapter 19. Preparation. Yubuki stood at the door of the Midoriya household adjusting her shoes as she was ready to embark on her own dreams. Today is the entrance exam of UA, and with Izuku and Hei in training, she was confident that she would be able to get into the hero school without too much problem, maybe even score first place. That would be something to brag about especially to Bakugo, she might hate him, and was against the idea of even speaking to him, but Izuku, Inko and Hei in had convinced her that she should at least be able to have a civil conversation with Katsuki not for their sake, but rather for her own, since many people wouldn't be aware of their past, and that would paint a bad image of her in her first day. Yubuki dear, are you ready? Came the voice of Inko Midoriya her voice was soft and angelic, her once chubby look was long since gone, and was replaced with an athletic build. Overall Inko looked like a model out of a magazine. Yes, I'm quite ready. Said Fubuki with a grin as Inko brought her daughter into a hug, feeling a lot of pride in her own daughter, just like she felt pride in her own son and daughter-in-law. Thus be careful, I know you tend to be sometimes reckless. Said Inko in a worried tone as no matter what transformation she went through, she was still worried over her little babies who grow way too fast. Fubuki pouted, she would have retorted, but she knew her mother was right, and arguing with their mother of all people is impossible, since she is too pure for anyone to take advantage of. Well, I guess it has something to do with genes after all the Midoriya family is full of reckless people. Came the amused voice of Izuku who was wearing a very expensive black button shirt with the top button being undone, showing a small glimpse of his chest and black jeans. Hey, and on the other hand wore a light beige shirt on top of it was a beige overcoat with blue-black jeans with a brown belt she held in her hand a small purse. I think she will do just fine, if anything her quirk is very suited for the kind of test UA will be conducting in their entrance exam. Said Hei in with a smile as she gave Yubuki a thumbs up showing her support. I know my dear, I just want to make sure she is extra careful. Said Inko with a smile, her eyes were full of life after all having retired and given the opportunity to once more go out and enjoy her life with her childhood friends did wonders for her. After adjusting his shoes, Izuku opened the door before he looked back towards his fiancé and sister, let's go you two. Said Izuku as he pointed towards the door before the two followed him outside the house, as they were wished luck by Inko. Heading towards the garage they were met with a black Bugatti Varen, and while he was not a materialistic person, but both Choi and Beat got him into buying one, which after a little convincing, he agreed to buy one. I'm still never going to get used to having our own supercar. Said Fubuki while Izuku gave her a smile. Well, you will eventually get used to it, now hop in. Said Izuku as he opened the door of the supercar taking his own place at the driver's seat, while Hei and took the seat next to him while Fubuki sat at the back seat. After having started the car he then left the garage and outside the mansion, as they took off towards the clean and quiet street. Suo, is today the day? Asked Fubuki as Hei and looked at the front mirror as she gave a nod. Yes, today we should be discussing the date where we will reveal everything to the world. Hei and answered Fubuki's question. This will be an extremely important event that will affect our world as we know it. The other nations are preparing themselves as well for the reveal, and are going to handpick the best of their hunters to represent them. Explained Izuku as he glanced at the front mirror to see Fubuki slightly nervous, and he couldn't blame her after all they will be thrusted into the spotlight, so might not be able to properly accept the idea of a new profession. Are you going to be one of the hunters to represent Japan? Asked Fubuki, but she knew that Izuku and Heian were already candidates, they were already S-rank hunters. Yes, we're S-rank hunters which is currently the highest rank a hunter could attain. We've accomplished a lot of things in our career with one of them being completing an S-rank gate with minor injuries. Said Izuku while Fubuki let out a sigh. Heian gave a smile don't worry, the hunter association is prepared for any backlash that we might receive, but considering that the new profession will be globally used by every nation, will make it easier for the public to accept us. Said Heian while Fubuki felt slightly relieved. Izuku pulled his car near the entrance of UA, we're here, good luck Fubuki. Said Izuku with a smile as Fubuki smiled before she opened the car, making sure to close it behind her. Obviously the appearance of a supercar had brought Fubuki a lot of attention, but she knew that Izuku was in a way preparing her for eventually being in the limelight both as a hero and a sister of an S-rank hunter. Izuku watched from afar until Fubuki was inside the safety of UA before he took off with Hei-in. It wasn't long when Izuku reached the gates of the new headquarters of the Hunter Association. Finding a parking spot was quite easy, since being an S-rank comes with perks such as VIP parking. If it isn't our favorite op couple. 
came the voice of Bee Kyun Ho wearing a black suit as he grinned at the two strongest couples, as some of the other hunters started calling them after word spread out about the S-rank gate that was completed by the two of them. Yoon Ho you seem to be in good spirits today. Said Izuku with a smile, obviously enjoying Beak's company, since the guy always made things interesting and exciting for their group of friends. Of course, today is an important day after all. Said Beak with a smirk before he looked back to see a supercar park as well and came out of it, was Choi wearing a brown vest underneath it was a white button shirt and brown pants, as he smirked at the group. You seem to be also in good spirits, how is Jericho doing? Asked Hae in with a small smirk while Choi blushed slightly at being reminded of his fiery girlfriend, how the two got together. Nobody knew although from the rumors they apparently bonded quite well after sending each other to the hospital and were later found by the nurses making out in the closet. She's fine, I can't seem to understand what's going through her head, as when we're alone she's always shy and maybe girly, but when we're around others she's the most bossiest and tempered person I've ever met. Said Jong in as everyone smiled knowing that she simply wanted to get accepted just like them, so she put a strong front in front of others. Well, she is quirkless like us. It was bound to happen for her to develop some form of defense mechanism. Said Hei in with a smile while Jong in already got to that conclusion a long time ago. Anyways we should be getting inside, we don't want to keep the chairman waiting. Beak pointed out as Izuku gave a simple nod before he walked inside being followed by his fiance who went to his side. Speaking of which, I heard your sister went for the entrance exam of UA. Said Beak while Izuku smiled. Yeah, I guess she decided to carry my old dream that I've long since abandoned. Said Izuku, obviously being touched by his sister's action. Hey and obviously giggled at that Izuku Kun was quite happy, but he obviously tried to convince her to follow her own dream because he thought she was doing this out of obligation. Said Hey and while Choi and Beak smiled. You really have a kind sister, Izuku. Said Choi as he pressed the button for the elevator. Thanks. Said Izuku. Although I'm surprised she decided to do the normal entrance exam instead of going through the recommendation. Said Beak while Hey and shaked her head. We obviously took this into consideration, but Fubuki wanted to not be seen as just a pretty face with a successful brother and sister-in-law, she wanted to prove herself out there. Explained Hei and while Beak gained an understanding look. Well I can't say she did the wrong thing, she probably would have been labeled as a spoiled brat by a lot of people either out of jealousy or for other personal reasons. Said Choi with a smile. I was actually quite hesitant to offer her a recommendation, but since she's my sister I wanted her to choose her own path, and me, mom and Hei in will be by her side supporting her decision. Said Izuku with a small frown, he obviously didn't want any harm to come to Fubuki. Yeah, although I'm pretty sure she could properly handle herself, we already gave her training to prepare her for all sorts of situations, and considering the type of entrance exam I'm pretty sure she has the advantage. Explained Hei in while Choi and Beak already understood as they knew of her quirk. Psychokinesis is a very good quirk if I'm being honest, she would have been a great hunter if she decided to get into this type of profession. Said Beak feeling a chill go down his spine as he saw the frown on Izuku's face. I'd rather her become a hero rather than be a hunter where she will be forced to kill and throw away her own innocence. Said Izuku, his brother mode obviously activated while Hei and smiled understanding where he was coming from. It's not like he thinks that Fubuki is weak, but being the older brother he wanted to keep her away from the bloodshed that surrounds being a hunter. After all hunters at one point will also have to kill human lives, because once the hunter is spread around the world, there will be those who would want to profit from it by trying to commit murder inside the gates, where there is no CCTV to point fingers. Reaching the office of the chairman of the hunter association, Izuku stepped forward knocking on it. The door was opened by Jinchil. Good, you four are on time. Said Jinchil as he opened the door enough for them to walk inside and be met with the chairman who was hard at work being surrounded by Kaina and Teshik who were helping him. Ani was obviously tired if the eye bags were any indication of his current health, the old man was extremely stubborn and liked to shoulder most things on his own. I think I speak for everyone when I say that you really need rest, chairman. Said Izuku as Gunny smiled, waving off the concern. Nonsense, I'm quite fine just finalizing everything so we could be recognized as a legal organization, besides the day I die is the day I could rest. Said Gunny with a smile while everyone let out a sigh already knowing that it's hopeless to try and convince the stubborn old man to take a break. Anyways, take a seat you four, we're going to discuss a lot of things. Said Gunny as the four went to the couch, obviously Izuku and Hei and sat next to each other, while Choi and Beak sat on a single sofa chair. Gunny signed a few papers before he let out a sigh, now that should clear things for today. Said Gunny as he stood up from his chair to take a seat in front of the teens. Now then, let's get down to business. Spoke Gunny as the teens paid attention to the chairman. I'm sure all of you are aware of the reason why you four are here today. Asked Gunny as the group of teens nodded. 
He wanted to talk to us about the day of the public reveal. Said Beak as Gunny nodded. Yes, now I've already discussed the details with those in the west of Japan, so I had to go there personally to not disrupt their work at clearing the gates, but luckily for the four of you the headquarter is quite close to your homes, so meeting is much easier. Said Gunny, obviously the trip was quite tiring but was worth it. Couldn't they at least send a representative to meet you here chairman, the hunters in the west have more S-rank hunters than in the east. They should have at least had Godo Ryuji attend the meeting here, you didn't need to tire yourself in traveling to the west, after all you're the backbone of the hunter association. Spoke Izuku obviously wanting to set the record straight that Gunny was the boss, and he is under no obligation to travel around to meet other hunters, it should be the other way around. I said the same thing, but Mr. Chairman is not convinced. Said Jinchul as he let out a sigh, he was obviously unhappy when Gunny decided to meet Godo Ryuji, along with the other hunters he could already remember the cocky smirk on Godo Ryuji face when Gunny visited him personally. There is also a concern that the hunters in the west could get extremely overconfident and develop a self-importance that won't put us in a good light to the public once the hunter profession is revealed. Our duty is to protect Japan from the gates, not to have a repeat of the hero profession where hunters would start to undermine your authority. Added Hei in, obviously she had seen Goto Ryuji, and she saw the buried ego that lay inside him and was growing with each passing minute. We need to also show that we are different from the heroes and not just another copy, since sadly public opinion matters, and you're an iconic figure to the older generation who admire your dedication towards protecting Japan, so we can't have any hunter get too cocky especially this early, which could ruin our chances of getting accepted by the public. Said Jong in. Mr. Chairman, managing the Hunter Association is stressful for anyone of your position, so you need to avoid anything that could put your health in danger and besides. Beak immediately grinned. Since gates are a big mystery we might find a potion that could return someone to their prime, and then you could achieve your dream by fighting with us hunters. Said Beak and everyone smiled. I will look forward to it, and you all brought a valid point. I will be more careful moving forward. Said Gunny, a smile plastered on his face, quite happy to have such considerate and reliable hunters by his side. Ginchul gave the group of teens a nod of approval, at least they understood their duties, and he is quite glad that they haven't forgotten their roots and are dedicated to the cause. Now then, the date of the reveal will be next week. Your dress code should be a suit since you're going to be officially introduced, I don't need to remind you all that there will be important figures that will be attending such as the Aoi Rozu Corporation. Eugen Constructions along with other big names who might be willing to do business with any of you, since you're going to be having your own guilds. Said Gunny while everyone nodded, but it was obvious for Gunny that there is a small hint of concern which was understandable, since now they are adults and will be talking with big names. You don't have anything to worry about since, aside from having our backing, you were also given lessons on etiquette and business related to prepare you for eventually taking your positions, besides most of you have already found good hunters to deal with all your guild business related stuff, and some of you have parents who are experienced in this kind of field. Said Gunny which Izuku and Hei and remembered Jin Ho who they have been keeping touch with as for Beak, he had his father to help. Now the moment all of you are revealed to the public, you won't be able to have the privacy you once had, so you will have to be more careful moving forward, that includes how you deal with the media. Spoke Gunny as he locked eyes with Izuku who obviously had a history of ignoring people he doesn't like, and his lack of tact which made Izuku let out a sigh, while Beak snickered. You also will have fans who support you, so you have to also be able to deal with them since public opinion matters, and you can't have fans be frustrated with you, even if you're not happy with it. That also means you should have better control over your own emotions. This time Gunny locked eyes with Beak who let out a sweat while Joy snickered. I'm saying this because people tend to start rumors that can sometimes be false, that includes rumors that could destroy relationships, such as claiming that said celebrity is being unfaithful to his lover, which could lead to breaking up, and all because of a rumor. Said Gunny this time his eyes locked with Joy, Izuku and Heian who understood. This is why we had you all together for this year, so you can all build a strong bond because most of the time, relationships end because they were shaky and they lacked mutual trust. Said Gunny while the teens nodded. Which is why you all need to have a better control over your own emotions, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get angry, but there are certain situations that you have to control your emotion, so you wouldn't give anyone a reason to have you look guilty. Said Gunny as he saw the teens nod their heads. Now regarding your family protection, the Hunter Association will be handling the task of issuing if needed security details to keep your loved ones safe from any harm, although most of you don't want to have bodyguards since it will strip what is left of your family privacy, which is why you need to move into a much safer area where hero patrol are around, like how Midoriya had did with his family. Said Gunny as he smiled. 
The next thing is relationships with foreign countries. There is a huge chance that if a hunter were to gain fame in their country, they would have other countries offering them a position in their rank with a much higher salary and privileges. Spoke Gunny this time slowing down to have the teens realize the situation. Of course, none of us here have any right to stop you, if any of you decide you want to become hunters in another country which is within your rights, but be careful, since most of those countries use bribes, that could only affect you negatively rather than positively. Said Gunny he obviously didn't like bringing this topic up, but the teens needed to hear it from his mouth, rather than from someone else, not to mention he needed to show them that he trusts them. We're staying here as Japanese hunters, this is our birth country, and I'd rather follow someone whom I could trust to not take advantage of me for his own selfish gains. Whatever happens we're going to be right behind you and make sure that Japan remains safe. Said Izuku obviously speaking for everyone which made Gunny smile quite happy to hear such sincerity from one of his children. I'm glad to hear that, now then lastly and the most important topic is the balance between heroes and hunters. I'm sure some of you are already aware of the consequences that might happen once the hunter profession is revealed to the public. Said Gunny which Izuku and Heian knew. What could it be, Mr. Chairman? Asked Choi, being a little confused as he looked at Gunny for answers. Right now, the Hero Association is led by a very greedy politician whom I have been keeping in check. Most of them are in it for the money, as well as maintaining the status quo, they don't really care about the public opinion, nor anything that doesn't fill their pockets with money, which is why heroes are filled with corruption. Said Gunny as he let the word sink in slowly. The Hunter Association is a clear threat to them, but they can't do anything to stop it, since the profession is being used globally by every nation, so their only option is to gain control of the Hunter Association, but they could never gain it, since I'm blocking them from corrupting the Hunter Association, so right now they're waiting for me to kick the bucket, so they can plant someone to take my position. Said Gunny which made everyone frown even more at that. The only way to ensure that could never happen is for all of you to get stronger both in terms of power and in terms of politics. If you're strong even they would be hesitant to take any action that would weaken their power and would submit more to your demands, no matter how much they loathe it, since they need you all more than anything to keep lining their pockets. Sadly, this is how the world works. Said Gunny as the teens understood why Gunny has been rather lenient with cocky hunters. All Might is a prime example, he is recognized globally, which is why the Hero Association values him more than anything. That aside, you should also be prepared to receive criticism, since not many people will agree with your methods of conducting your missions, not to mention some of the heroes will feel threatened as well. Said Gunny while Choi, B. Ken Heian started to sweat a little, but Izuku was not worried instead his face darkened obviously he wasn't going to allow something like this to happen. Now then I need you all to prepare yourself mentally for the reveal next week, and please take care of yourself. Said Gunny while the teens had a small smile as they stood up from their respective chairs. I'm going to send you all the specifics such as the date, time along with detailed information on those that will be attending the conference. Said Jinchul as the teens nodded not before giving Gunny a bow to show respect. Chapter 20. Fubuki Entrance Exam. Fubuki had been just dropped off in front of the gates of UA, to say that she was uncomfortable was an understatement. All eyes were on her the moment she stepped one foot on the grounds of UA, but who could blame them, a girl had just stepped out of a sports car, and a very expensive one at that. People were staring at her, either the perverted boys who were leering at her, just because she was quite well endowed for her age, or the people who were already coming to a quick conclusion, thinking that she was just one of the spoiled princes, trying to flash her wealth on them commoners. Lastly, there were the rich kids who gave her a nod already acknowledging her presence, with some giving her a comforting smile, knowing that the girl was new and is overwhelmed to some extent by the stares. Luckily, her brother and sister-in-law even though they were untalented when it came to dealing with the media, have been taught by the Hunter Association how to deal with media and were given courses on how to act properly, but for Izuku, it was hard to have him learn how to have proper conversation with others that aren't within his circles of friends' acquaintance, especially when they are total strangers. Tahein was very shy, and just like Izuku she had a lack of social skills, they only manage to click well with people who are like them, but they have hard time dealing with others with Izuku being often dense to notice that he was rude, making him lack tact, which is a necessary skill that Izuku had a hard time learning. Taking a deep breath she decided to finally take her first step into becoming a hero, she was taught and prepared for today, and for her future overall. She was doing quite well than she expected, apparently people had better things to do than stare at her all day. Her breathing was kept steady as she looked in front of her not looking at any distraction, it was just yesterday that she was just willing to stay all day in the house relaxing on the sofa while texting with her friends. She had no other big dreams other than enter a good medical school, which is one of the many well-paying job in Japan, considering that heroes and civilians alike get injured on a daily basis due to villain attack. 
Inko was a former nurse and during her early years when she was still young, she was doing quite well and was promoted quite a few times due to how useful her quirk is when it came to carrying medical tools, although the most important factor that played in Inko's career was her beauty. But her mother had gained weight and was no longer able to do what she once used to do, and she became less appealing. Her quirk on the other hand was far superior to her mother, and she was quite endowed and stunning for her age, so her career as a doctor would have been quite good had she not changed her mind to pursue heroics. Why did she choose heroics? Maybe because she realized how burdening the medical field is, how useless it is in the grand scheme of things. Fubuki had watched too many movies to this day, and some of them depicted the life of doctors and nurses. Yubuki might look lazy, but nobody could deny that her test scores proved otherwise, she had the right to laze around the house, especially when she remained at the top of her class, with a chance to get a scholarship to one of the top high schools in Japan. The reason why she decided to become a hero is because Yubuki didn't want some fake hero or her patient harassing her by questioning her capability as a nurse. She knows that it's a very shallow reason, but with the hunter going to become official, there will be conflicts, and that means more injured patients which will become exhausting and burdening on the person. She also realized that she was gifted with a very powerful quirk for her age, yet her brother on the other hand, wasn't born with any quirk and had to suffer for it because he couldn't achieve his dreams of becoming a hero, so in a way she was doing this to honor her brother former dream and maybe because she wanted to finally make a change in this world. She also wanted to be the one representing the heroes while her brother represent the hunters and ensure that no conflicts could start. She's the hero who saves everyone on the surface while her brother and her sister-in-law fight against a supernatural entity that seeks to cause a rampage around the world. Maybe there is hope for heroes and hunters to be able to work together if people simply try to understand each other instead of trying to pull others down because some people are not happy with what they already have. Yubuki then closed her eyes momentarily before opening it to see herself inside the auditorium in which her exam will take place, she then glanced at the card that she held in her hand, revealing her seat number, as she continued down the small stair, checking the rows of seat until she arrived at her seat which she immediately took a seat. Yubuki, you must always stay vigilant at all times, an important trait for those who seek to become a hero or a hunter. That means you should always be able to see who's the one you should keep your guard up. Izuku's voice replayed in her head. This is one of the many lessons her brother had taught her. Those who are here today have already passed the first part of the exam which is the written exam, or else they wouldn't have been accepted to enroll in UA in the first place. All that remains is to determine among these numbers who are the ones that stand out in some way or those that carry themselves in a way that shows confidence in one's ability. You'd be surprised at how much you can learn about a person by just observing their body language. Yubuki glanced silently observing the candidates. A lot of them looked plain with some of them wearing suits, if only to just impress the UA staff, but sadly for them, looking good is not part of the test. Some of the candidates looked frightened if their shaking legs or sweating hands was any indication of their discomfort, but then again, they have every reason to be concerned, those who get into UA are the best of the best after all, so one should be able to distinguish themselves from all other candidates. The one that got her interest was obviously Katsuki Bakugu, she had known him enough to know that with his quirk and good control over it, he is going to be able to join UA. The second person was the typical stuck-up rich kid who wore a brown suit and had the typical nerd glasses who followed the rules like it was his religion. She let out a sigh, knowing that she was already going to have a hard time getting along with him due to his type being inflexible in their thinking and are narrow-minded. The third person that got her interest was a girl who had a similar hairstyle to her sister-in-law, but is brown and has a permanent blush on both her cheeks, the girl obviously looked overwhelmed by the size of the auditorium, but then again. The girl didn't seem to come from any rich family maybe financial problems, but she was not one to judge since the Midoriya family was once upon a time an average family with a stable income. It seemed that among the large number of the candidates that attended today which is around 100 to 150 students only 20 to 30 stood out in some way, but then again the unexpected could happen, and she might have overlooked others because of their body language, not giving them a good first impression. The light seemed to open as Fubuki looked at the center where there is a large screen showing a blue screen with a UA logo in the center, before walking to the podium was present Mick. She had never really liked present Mick, he was way too enthusiastic and loud for her taste, but then again her brother used to love hearing the present Mick radio show, something that made her feel nostalgic when remembering her brother, back when he was the plain looking fanboy nerd who was enthusiastic about heroes, but now he is a lady killer who is calm and collected, not to mention quite mature. For his age along with having a beautiful and strong financee. What's up? UA candidates, thanks for tuning in to me, your school DJ said present Mick before he stretched his hand with an enthusiastic smile, let me hear ya. 
shouted present Mick hoping to hear people cheer with him but nobody did instead, they gave the enthusiastic staff a blank stare. Present Mick, not feeling offended, continued his speech. Well I will skip the main show, so let's talk about all those practical exams going down, okay. Are you ready said present Mick at the end once more trying to hype the candidates only to fail miserably at that. Like your application said. Today, you rocking boys and girls, we'll be out there conducting 10 minute mock battles in suburb settings. Said present Mick as behind him the screen changed revealing several battle centers. Don't worry my friends, after I drop the Mick here you will head to your specified battle center, sounds good. Asked present Mick only for the people to remain silent which took it in stride. Okay. Said present Mick as Yubuki looked at her identification card which revealed her ID number, along with her battle center which she will head towards. The screen once more revealed the image of tall buildings next to it, were three different types of robots, with a number of points awarded for destroying them, the first being one point, the second being two point, and the third being three point. Okay. Okay. Let's check out your target, there are three types of faux villains in every battle center. You learn points, but so is the level of difficulty so you better choose wisely, your goal in this trial is to use your quirk to increase your score by shredding these faux villains. Said present Mick before he pointed towards the crowd of aspiring heroes. But check it, make sure you're keeping things heroic, attacking others is prohibited, and you will be removed from UA grounds. Said present Mick reminding the competitors of the consequences. Excuse me sir, but I have a question. Came the voice of Tenyuida, who had his hand raised before the light was directed at him, making him visible to both present Mick and the other competitors. Here we go. Jubuki thought, knowing what's about to come since the guy's body language gives it all, and she knows he's about to confront present Mick about the fourth robot that was not mentioned in the explanation. Hit me. Said present Mick enthusiastically as Iida pulled the printout as he pointed his fingers on the fourth robot. On the printout, you've listed four types of villains, not three. With all respect, if these are errors on official UA materials, it is shameful. We're exemplary students, we expect the best from Japan's most notable school, a mistake such as this won't do. Reprimanded Iida which obviously irritated Fubuki. Are you seriously questioning the best hero school in the country? Asked Fubuki, a little irritated, which grabbed the attention of Iida and the other candidates. Maybe if you had let him finish explaining the rules before cutting in, he would have gotten to that part without you making unnecessary scene and making yourself into an even bigger fool, Mr. Know-it-all. Mocked Yubuki which obviously made the other candidates snicker while Iida blushed in embarrassment not being used to being confronted by others, and realized that he was a little too tense about the whole exam. Alright, alright. Spoke present Mick planning to de-escalate the situation to not further embarrass the candidate who looked like a total fool in front of the others. Examinee 7111, thanks for calling in with your request. Said present Mick as the light went out leaving Iida to sit embarrassed. The blue screen once more changed to reveal a large looking robot with zero points at the top of its head, showing that it had no value. The fourth villain type is worth zero points, that guy is just an obstacle that will be thrown in your way. There is one in every battle center, think of avoiding it, it's not like it can't be beaten, but there's. Kinda no point. I recommend my listeners to ignore and focus on the ones at the top of the chart. Advised present Mick as Iida gave a nod from his seat. The other candidates started to whisper among each other about the revelation before present Mick decided to wrap up everything, so the students could head towards the exam area. Yubuki got off the bus as she looked at the large and imposing gate of Battle Center B. Everyone had already changed into very comfortable clothes for the exam. Fubuki on the other hand had taken to wearing a forest green tracksuit, which was more than enough for this particular exam. Yubuki had to admit, the sight of the multiple battle centers were quite imposing, and was enough to show the might of UA as a hero school that nurtures the next generation of heroes. She then glanced at the candidates and to her displeasure, Iida was there glancing at her every now and then, probably sizing her up to determine if she is someone he should be careful around or not. After all, the guy's pride must have taken a major hit if he is keeping an eye out for her, probably trying to see her do something wrong, so he can reprimand her to keep things even between them, which is very pathetic in her eyes. Yubuki then glanced towards Achako Yuraka, the girl was obviously trying to keep a steady breath obviously nervous, compared to the other candidates who a large number of them aren't worth her attention, since they fell mostly in the category of the overconfident and brutish individual, who are all brawn but no brain. Yubuki might be aiming to be a hero, but unlike her brother who back when he was still the nerd as everyone called him, he probably would have gone there to comfort her, but she won't do that. The reason is simple, this is an exam area, she can't waste her time trying to help others and not prioritize her own by preparing for the test. 
It's unfortunate but the world was never really kind to anyone, not even to her brother back when he had to endure the harsh life of a quirkless kid. If she can't overcome her own nervousness, then the brown-haired girl has no place in UA, where she will have to face villains who won't hesitate to kill and maim. Okay, start. Shouted Present Mick loudly and suddenly as everyone except Fubuki looked at the large tower to see Present Mick. Fubuki, having been told by both Izuku and Chahei in about the exam that is conducted in UA. That immediately rushed towards the gate and went inside the fake city in order to gather points for herself, giving herself a head start compared to the others who looked confused and stunned. What's wrong? There are no countdowns in real fights. Shouted Present Mick and it's then that everyone realized that they needed to get inside the city and rushed inside, trying to get as many points as possible. Yubuki who had already rushed inside giving herself a boost of speed by using her quirk, had found her first robot, which was a one-pointer which she immediately crushed by the clenching of her fist. Yubuki then found another robot, but before she could take action, a laser beam was shot past her destroying the robot, revealing a French-looking blonde boy who gave her a wink and was practically sparkling. Merci. We made a good team. At you. Shouted the French look blonde boy as he rushed away much to Fubuki ire, as she started to float using her quirk ability, before she started to levitate pebbles, rocks and various other items that she could gather around her to launch them on several robots that she found. Hey. That was my robot. Shouted a candidate as he glared at Fubuki who gave him a taunting smirk that infuriated the teen. Well too bad, this is an exam so if you don't like it go home already said Fubuki with a smirk as she floated away, not bothering to glance at the enraged candidate who had to keep his cool in order to look for more robots. It was obvious that Fubuki was having a good time as she continued using her ability over psychokinesis to crush robots either directly or indirectly, by having a rain of pebbles and rocks raining down the sky, targeting skillfully the robots and not the candidates. Although her actions have obviously pissed off a lot of the candidates, since she didn't hesitate to steal points from others, but then again, they should have already expected that to happen, after all pro heroes compete against each other for ranks, and some heroes tend to steal others' spotlight by taking down the villain like Mount Lady. 70 points. Spoke Fubuki with a smirk, is this what her brother felt when squashing the monsters at the dungeon, maybe being a hero won't be bad. In this practical exam, the examinees have not been informed of the number of villains or their locations. They have to draw the villains out from there. Spoke a chimera-looking person while observing a monitor that displayed several candidates that caught the attention of the staff of UA. Information gathering ability to understand the situation before anyone else. Spoke the principal of UA as a video feed revealed both Kyoka Jiro using her earphone jacks to listen and determine the number of robots, while another feed showed Mizo Shoji, who used his tentacle eyes to find the largest number of robots from the roof in order to hunt for them for points. Mobility that can be used in many different circumstances. Said Nezu the principal of UA as a video feed of Iida sliding on the ground as he smashed his foot on the many robots crushing them before the video feed changed to Fubuki, who used her mobility over her quirk to crush robots easily. And pure combat ability. Continued Nezu revealing Bakugo who was panting as he stood on top of a destroyed robot before the feed changed once more to a boy with black hair and hardening quirk destroying robots with his fist. These basic abilities needed to keep the peace in the streets are turned into points in this test. Finished Nezu with a gleeful smile on his face. All Might on the other hand looked at a particular candidate which was Fubuki, her quirk was spectacular, indeed given she was easily making short work of the faux villains, with her good control over her quirk. It made him wonder if she could be a candidate for his quirk one for all, she did seem to be quite the smart candidate who looked at things in a more tactical approach. Although what had attracted him to her was the similarity that she had with the boy he had met on the roof a few months ago, is it guilt because he practically broke someone's dream, especially a person who is quirkless just like he was once? Or is it because he is afraid to learn that the girl might somehow be related to that young man he met before, and is already aware of his action towards her brother cousin? One thing was for sure, the young girl was definitely quite talented, and he would like to watch her carefully and see if she is a worthy candidate for one for all. He hoped that if he were to ever come to such a decision, that she would be willing to accept the responsibility that comes with one for all, even though it pained him to play such a big burden on someone. An unknown UA staff walked towards a red button as he removed the safety glasses before pressing the red button. Their true test is still to come. Said the unknown UA staff. The entire battle center started to shake as multiple explosions were heard releasing large smoke as it covered the imposing figure of the zero-point robot as the candidate stopped to watch with concern at the towering form of the zero-point robot who was using both buildings on his side as a crutch in order to properly stand up. This is nuts. 
shouted Fubuki. She knew that Yue had enough money to throw around in big doors and stuff like that, but for them to create such an imposing robot as part of the entrance exam is downright crazy. It made her wonder if the UA staff are a bunch of lunatics who enjoy seeing candidates scream of fear. The zero-point robot decided to flex its muscle by cocking its fist back before launching it towards the ground, causing a large storm of debris to fly around, overwhelming some of the candidates that were close to the zero-pointer. An overwhelming threat. How people act after they've seen this shows their true nature. Spoke All Might to himself in the monitor room as he observed the screaming candidates who took to fleeing for their lives. Yubuki managed to break out of her own shock as she grit her teeth, she knew that the zero pointer was way over the top, not to mention it had no way to benefit her any points, but then again her brother had always taught her to see the hidden meaning behind everything. There must be a reason why Yue would create a zero pointer whom they advised them to avoid. Less than two minutes left. Declared present Mick loudly as Yubuki resolved herself in some way to prevent the zero pointer from harming the other students. Ow. Came the low voice of the Kaku Yuraka who found her legs stuck underneath a concrete floor. Heroes don't always fight villains, but rather they save the people. I think your quirk can be very good in a rescue situation. You just need to one day realize it yourself. Cha In's voice ringed through Fubuki's head and knew what needed to be done. Fubuki knew what she needed to do right now, she needed to show everyone that she is a hero. Using her quirk, she easily lifted the concrete floor before using it once more to levitate the gravity girl towards her, who looked amazed by the use of Fubuki quirk. Okay, can you move? Asked Fubuki knowing that time is of the essence which Akako hesitantly nodded while Fubuki was not convinced, she already saw her sprained leg after all she was once an aspiring doctor. You obviously have a sprained leg, let's get it healed once we get out of here. Said Fubuki with a sigh as she knew that she can't confront the zero pointer and chose to rescue the girl, but before that she decided to use her quirk to levitate several large pebbles. Rocks and even concrete floor and throw it towards the advancing zero pointer which pushed it a few feet back and even destabilized its footing enough to have her make a run for it, with the gravity girl being held by her. Everyone watched a little amazed while Fubuki didn't destroy the zero pointer, it was obvious that she had enough balls to attack the zero pointer to save another competitor, something that made Eid embarrassed even more, when realizing that he was once more bested and knew that Fubuki was the better hero. The large buzzer sound could be heard echoing through the battle center, as everyone found themselves taking a deep sigh of relief, as the large zero pointer immediately stopped his halt, his glowing red eyes disappeared, showing that it was shut down by the UA staff. Yubuki immediately placed the brown-haired girl on the floor, hoping that Yue would handle the girl's injuries, since her job was done. Thank you. Spoke Akako softly having been able to regain enough breath to alleviate the drawback that came from using her quirk more than she is used to doing. Yubuki glanced at the brown-haired girl with a smile. Don't mention it, I just did what anybody else would do in my situation. Heroes save people just as much as they defeat villains, so it's natural to protect others in need of help, said Fubuki which Iida was listening to along with some other competitors, and realized the difference between them. Those who once thought she was a spoiled princess found themselves reviewing their thoughts on the girl who dominated the entire test with her quirk. She was willing to put her life at risk to save that girl without even an ounce of hesitation. Of course, I would have done the same. Thought Iida as he clenched his fist while biting his lips trying to convince himself that he would have done the same if the situation was real life, but he knew deep down that he just like the others, had been intimidated by the imposing figure of the zero pointer, and had chosen to flee. He felt embarrassed now, especially when he said big words about being exemplary students. Recovery girl was making her way through the competitors with a smile that a grandmother would wear when looking at her own grandchildren, as she gave gummies to some of the competitors who exhausted way more of their energy. Good work, good work said recovery girl as she walked towards Akako who looked at Fubuki with deep admiration before she looked at the legs and decided to use her quirk by extending her lips to unnatural length before kissing the girl at her forehead, which encased her in green aura, before her legs started to heal itself. Fubuki was amused to say the least. That explains why UA is crazy enough to hold such a reckless and dangerous entrance exam, they have every right to be confident when they have recovery girl healing everyone by just a kiss. Thought Fubuki as she turned around ready to leave. One thing is for sure, Blizzard of Hell will be a great hero name regarded highly by many people just like her brother and sister-in-law will be regarded as the best hunters in the world. Truly, the Midoriya family were made to be great heroes. Chapter 21. Part 1. Conference. Izuku stared at the mirror as he wore a very expensive suit. He usually doesn't spend money recklessly, but at this point he can afford to be reckless with his money usage since he has enough money to buy a large land in Tokyo where simply the rent of an apartment is expensive. That aside, he was going to be attending a very important conference where the hunters would be finally revealed to the public after all that time, so he needed to be dressed for the occasion. 
How do I look? Asked Heian, a little nervous as she wore a suit with a tie similar to what Izuku had worn for the occasion. It was probably her first time wearing something like that since they weren't obligated to wear one before, but this time the situation called for one. I think you look great. Izuku complimented with a small smile as he walked towards her and reached for the tie, as he adjusted it to look straight and not messy. I know the suit can be hard to breathe in, but we only have to wear it for a few hours until the conference is over. We have been practicing for this day with the others, and I'm sure the chairman will have our back if an unpredictable question is being asked. Said Izuku comforting her since he knew that she was nervous with the idea of attending the conference, where a lot of important figures will be present. It was just last year that each of them were losers who were trying to live in a society that valued quirks. Each day to them were a challenge that they had to overcome, and they were all content with their current life, as long as they can find a job and earn money in some way, but now they were no longer the same losers that were content with what they have, instead they were now a very influential. People who had a lot of connection in the government. Thanks. I just hope I don't mess up and embarrass myself in front of many people. Said Hei and while Izuku rubbed her head gently. Don't worry, you will do great. All we have to do is stand in front of everyone similar to how the top 10 heroes act when attending the hero billboard chart JP, we will probably be asked to give a few short words, but that's as far as they would require us. Said Izuku, which was enough to get rid of Hei and worries. The knock interrupted them before it opened revealing Inko and Fubuki the two of them were worried in their own ways, with Inko being the most worried. She looked at her son and daughter-in-law as she saw them wearing their suits and had to admit that they look great in them. Are you two doing okay? Are you missing anything? Inko asked, worried about her son and her second daughter, as she asked a lot of questions which Yubuki had realized was a little bit too much and would add pressure on the two, so she placed her hand on her mother's shoulder. Mom, I think that's enough questions. I'm sure they're quite prepared and your questions might make them even more nervous, so please don't add more pressure on them. Said Fubuki as she could see Hei in almost drowning from the worried questions that gave her anxiety. Izuku wasn't that nervous, but it would be a lie if he said that he wasn't thinking about how the conference will go and what he will do if some unexpected situation were to happen. Izuku had grown that much can be said, so he was able to handle the situation with a cool expression, but that was probably because the system is basically reconstructing him in a sense, where he is rebuilt once more to be a worthy shadow monarch. We're doing okay. We don't need to bring anything unnecessary with us. Izuku had taken to calming his mother down by adding a smile to comfort his worrying mother. Oh, I see. I'm just worried about your debut in the limelight in a sense. Answered Inko with a smile. Well if you ask me, all brother and sister have to do is stand there, but I think people might get distracted when they see two hot looking models. I will need to get used to chasing the many simps that will come at our doorstep. Fubuki said teasingly while Inko frowned at her daughter teasing nature. Don't say that, I'm already getting anxiety from all of this. Standing out there and having people take pictures of me will be really embarrassing. Said Heian with an embarrassed face. Don't worry, if that happens I will deal with it. Said Izuku in a comforting voice which made Heian comfortable while Inko and Fubuki paled. Absolutely not, young man. Said Inko in a scolding tone as Izuku looked at his mother in confusion. Seriously brother, your version of dealing with it would probably involve destroying the camera and threatening the cameraman and camera women. this would immediately ruin your reputation and make your life and ours harder. Fubuki was quick to scold Izuku who felt slightly embarrassed. Sorry. Izuku apologized while his face was somewhat straight that one would think that he wasn't remorseful. That doesn't look like the face of a guy who is remorseful. Said Fubuki, somewhat irritated by her brother's somewhat dense nature and had to wonder how he managed to score Heian as a girlfriend. What do you want me to say, I did say I'm sorry. Said Izuku a little bit loudly while Fubuki gave him a glare. Then show some sincerity in your voice and face, damn it. Said Fubuki while the two siblings seemed to exchange glares, but ultimately they were just screwing around in their own ways, and while Linko was not happy with their methods of communication, she can't deny that they already have each other's back. Enough fighting, I think we need to go in case there is a last minute change. Said Hei in a little loudly to get the two siblings from their glaring contest which Izuku immediately turned towards his fiancée and agreed. Well, I guess you're right. Said Izuku as he decided that he needed to leave along with Hei in. We're leaving now mom, sis. Said Izuku being followed by Hei into the door of the two-story house, as both Inko and Fubuki stood watching them leave the house. Take care, you two. Said Inko loudly for the two of them to hear her as she looked with a few tears in her eyes, watching as her son had grown so wonderfully. I will be preparing the channel where the conference will be aired. Said Fubuki as she rushed towards the living room where the TV is located, while Linko couldn't help but shake her head slightly before following after her daughter to also watch the event. 
Izuku and Heian were walking out of the house where they were met with a large black SUV car where the door was opened, revealing two grinning idiots which were Choi and Beak, and lastly was Kang Teshik himself. The Q2 lovebirds long enough. Teshik commented as both Izuku and Heian quickly jumped inside the SUV car and closed the door behind them, signaling for the driver to take off towards the location. Sorry. Mom was just a little worried since this will be our debut. Said Izuku which the others could understand. Well, I can't really blame her. My grandmother was quite worried about me, but my grandfather told me that I should go ahead and have my head held high. Said Choi having understood that women in general worry more about their children and grandchildren, which is a very good quality. Um, my dad did cry a little bit, but that was what he usually called his manly tears, as he patted me on my back. A little bit too hard for a simple pat, but it was enough for me to understand how he felt. This is just another challenge that we will need to quickly overcome. Said Yunho, being the one to step in and encourage the others in the car. I'm slightly nervous, but I think as long as I have you guys, I can actually do it. Said Heian with a smile as Izuku, Jong-in and Teshik gave their own smiles, while Yunho grinned at that as he rubbed his nose feeling somewhat bashful by the compliment. Well, we are a team after all. Said Beak with a smile as the others had taken to pulling small drinks to entertain themselves, since they were going to Tokyo. Now, there are few things that need to be mentioned before we arrive at our destination. Teshik was the one to speak, bringing everyone's attention to him. Now I'm aware that you were told about what you four need to do, but I feel the need to remind you once more in case some of you had forgotten and for safety precaution, to ensure this show runs smoothly. Said Teshik as everyone gave him their attention. Now, as you're aware, the chairman is very well known in Japan, more so among the older generation. A lot of reporters would be looking at interviewing him or taking pictures of him before the conference could start, which is why you four are here along with the others that are invited. For your first act, you need to display your presence without the need to say a single word. Said Teshik while the four hunters nodded. Once we arrive at our destination, the chairman will be the first to leave his limousine with his guards making sure that the crowd is under control and monitored. You will be leaving after him and will be flanking him from behind to keep the attention divided on both the four of you and the chairman himself. Said Teshik as everyone was following so far. I will be dropping out of the car a block away since I'm an assassin, and I will protect the chairman from afar, you're the big muscles here, so make sure to use your aura to leave a lasting impression that you aren't just some scrawny high school kid that could be bullied around," said Teshik reminding them of their role in the conference which they easily accepted. After that, you will be taken by one of our agents to the backstage where you will watch as the chairman does his opening speech, and once he calls over you all then you come out. I don't need to remind you that making a good first impression is needed to sway the public opinion, we're trying to push forward a new profession, and how fast the public accepts us could help us easily establish the Hunter Association and gain public support. Said Teshik while everyone nodded their head in understanding. For the most part you will all remain silent unless given permission to speak a few words. Think of it like those hero billboard chart JP that the heroes do every now and then to announce new rankings. So if you're nervous about screwing up then don't be since this is your debut, and I'm sure that all of you are going to do great things since you are prepared beforehand. Said Teshik while Hay and felt a boost in her confidence. We've practiced a lot for this day so we will go hard and dominate. Said Beak with a determined gaze which the others wholeheartedly agreed. Beak was the team hype man, he always made any doubts in their mind go away with his infectious determination, which never ceased to leave a smile on their faces. It makes them wonder why the guy hasn't gotten laid yet or was his luck that really bad. Izuku and Choi glanced at each other and decided to hook their friend up. Flashes of camera were all that the team could really see even from the black window, they could see the very annoying flashes of camera go off and on in less than a second. It was very irritating for one's eyes, especially since it was currently night which is around 6.30pm, so the flashes of cameras are much clearer than it would be in the morning. Heshik had already gotten off the car like he had first explained, and had taken off and like a shinobi in the dead of the night, he concealed his presence and left towards the conference, where he will watch and protect the chairman from a distance. One really had to appreciate the man's dedication towards his job as an assassin. The black limousine was in front of them as it walked slowly before halting next to the red carpet, while standing next to the next limousine was a security agent who had opened the door, allowing for the man of the hour to leave the limousine. Bunny stood straight with his head held high and a smile that showed his teeth that were practically shining from how much he takes good care of his health even at his age. Flashes of camera went off as the man walked slowly through the red carpet, his presence brought both fear and respect from the many people that were watching him. Every step he made gave the impression that Gunny was no ordinary man, but rather some nobleman because of the way he held himself. It was truly something awe-inspiring for the four teens who watched as the big boss had made his way to the red carpet and took the attention of everyone on him. Now that's badass. 
said Beek speaking for everyone in the SUV as they moved just as the limousine left. Everyone quickly put their game face on as they were going to be exposed for the first time into the world of limelight. The same security agent that opened Gunny door had done the same for them as Izuku decided to first walk out as planned. Izuku stepped on the red carpet, knowing that Heian was behind him, as his eyes glowed blue and walked at a good pace, before taking his position a few feet behind the chairman essentially flanking him. Everyone's attention that was fully on Gunny shifted to the new presence that was flanking the chairman, just like he predicted the crowd reaction varied. A lot of people were rightfully intimidated by Izuku's presence which gave them a chilling feeling. A lot of the female reporters that came for this occasion couldn't help but go crazy with their pictures as a person who looked like those people that you would see in a model shoot had stepped onto the red carpet. Who's he? Asked a random guy as he looked at Izuku, getting a chilling feeling when Izuku's eyes glanced at him which resulted in many men to shiver, while the many women swooned even more by the attractive man that glanced at their direction. He was looking at me. Argued a female reporter as she got into a small argument with the other female reporters. He must be blind, he was looking at me. Another added with a confident smirk, it was really sad, but that was the natural result that everyone had predicted. I bet I can get him to look at me, then we can prove that he was looking at me and not you. Said the first reporter which made Gunny who was watching from the corner of his eyes to chuckle slightly, feeling amused by the scene. It didn't take long for the attention to shift once more as Hay and walked out followed by Beak and Choi. Just like the many women had been simping over Izuku, many healthy males found themselves simping over Hei-in, who was releasing her aura to intimidate others, before she took her place next to Izuku. Are those two together? Commented one of the male reporters feeling somewhat envious. There's no way. I bet they're colleagues or something. One of the female reporters was quick to deny. I think they look cute together. That aside, I think the two other gentlemen look quite powerful, said another neutral reporter who wasn't simping on any of the teens, probably because the guy was happily married. I have to agree. They carry quite a heavy presence, could they be the chairman's bodyguard? Questioned another reporter while another was quick to refute his question. No way. Look at them, they're like what? 16 to 17 years old, I don't think they're just bodyguards. Said another reporter and people were quick to start speculating and predicting. Just as their speculation almost went far, their attention was brought once more to another car that came in revealing Godo Ryuji, along with another man by the name of Ryuji Sujimoto. Godo had been waiting for this glorious day for quite a long time, and he had displayed his eagerness by using his aura as well and walking with grace in his steps. Look. Another two came, the one with black hair looks to be quite powerful. He kind of gives me the same chilling vibe that the other black hair teen gave me. Commented one of the male reporters. I think the blonde girl is also quite strong, she might be close and level with the handsome boy and the new guy. Said another reporters as they came with their speculation, while Goto smiled even more, even though he is compared to Izuku and Heian, but he acknowledges them as worthy hunters. It was obvious that the group of hunters had done their job splendidly in being able to attract the attention of the public on them, without the need to utter a word, everyone already knew that they were strong, and not some pushovers given the aura that exuded from each of them. Nezu sat in his office watching the news broadcast along with the staff of UA that included the new addition to the faculty All Might who had taken to being in his weakened form, since the faculty were already aware of his three-hour time limit. So they're finally going to reveal it. Nezu thought to himself, Gogunny might have been good at hiding his track, and those under him are equally good, but he was Nezu the principal of UA as such he knew things that he wasn't meant to know. When the gates had first appeared, he was intrigued but brushed it off at the beginning because it did seem harmless, and the government had managed to get a cover story. His interest grew when it happened a second time and then a third time. He knew that the government was trying to hide something from them, but he couldn't wait and see if they're going to explain what was really happening, but rather he chose to dig deeper. Using one of recently developed camera bugs, he was able to observe and listen in on the conversation. This normally should result in his head being removed for sticking his nose in a government affair, but he hardly cared, there is no thrill in living if you don't put your life on the line. He was able to get away from it, but part of him believed that he was allowed since every time he tried to spy on them, the chairman himself would glance at the direction of the camera bug and give a knowing look as if already expecting him to dig for information, and was permitting him to listen which Nezu felt quite grateful that Gunny was willing to trust him. Among the many government higher-ups that he had dealt with in his long tenure as the principal of the most powerful hero school in Japan, Gunny was the only guy that Nezu had shown great respect and admiration. If only there were many people like Gunny around, Japan would have been safer and less corrupt as it is today. People like Madam the President who brainwash children from a young age to become bullies and villains, by trying to maintain the status quo that those with powerful quirks could become heroes, and those who possess villainous quirks, are going to be villains, and lastly quirkless people are useless. 
The Nezu, Madam President is the type of person who believes that might makes right. Those with power are right and they do no wrong, while the weak are wrong only being good at spewing hate speeches and lies. Heroes might be perceived as good doers, but not all of them are good people. This is no different than the old phrase where history is written by the victors. If the Hero Association were to lose credibility, then the hunters will be the one to manipulate the history, and the Hero Association will be regarded as a tyrannical association that manipulated people through propaganda. He is sure that the Hero Society will be at war not only with the villains, but the hunters that are going to threaten their position in the country and the world. Nezu honestly didn't care because he was not really concerned, having already estimated how things will go from now on. The Hero Association had been continuing to prosper over the years being left unchecked because of All Might's presence that decreased the crime rate by a lot, but he knew that All Might would eventually retire. The Hunters are going to be the one to suppress the Hero Association and keep the power balance in check which is very much needed. Society won't be overly dependent on the heroes to always save the day since if war were to break out between the heroes and villains, where heroes end up losing or struggling, then the entire country will go into flames, but with the hunters around, society will remain standing, even if the hero association ends up crumbling. Nezu could only grin, the next few months are going to be one interesting journey for him. His monotonous life will soon be replaced with an exhilarating conflict that will keep his boredom from swallowing him whole. He was rooting for the hunters that was being led by the chairman Go Gunny, but he needed to keep his part as the principal of UA. Still, aside from Go Gunny himself the one that caught his interest the most is Izuku Midoriya. He knew that the boy's sister had applied for UA, since he had taken time to check her files, and he knew that the boy had a history with All Might that was quite terrible, given that All Might had rejected the boy's dream, which made him frown at the symbol of peace. He knew that Toshinori had meant well, and that having his weakened form exposed to a fan, left him quite agitated, but All Might should have acted in a much more professional manner. Leaving a quirkless kid who probably got bullied and discriminated against for being quirkless on the top of a roof of a building is an unwise choice. What would have happened if the boy's will was weak and ended up taking his own life? All Might would have been overcome with guilt and blamed himself like he always did when things went downhill for him, and then end up overworking himself to make up for his mistake, which would only help in deteriorating his health. Since Izuku didn't do such a thing like take his own life that made him see how strong-willed the boy is to have endured even a rejection from his idol, the boy would have become a good hero and a successor to one for all. If All Might had gotten enough chance to see the boy's potential, but Izuku is already in good hands since he is working under Gunny and seemed to have gained new powers from the gates, which made him quite happy for Izuku, since he felt that he deserved it. Nezu wanted to chuckle a little since the brother is now a hunter and will be a big shot hunter in the near future, while his sister applied to UA, and with her quirk and All Might's sudden interest in her, he knew that she was going to be quite the formidable hero whether she accept one for all or not. The hunter will have its own pillar which is Izuku Midoriya, and the heroes will have Yubuki as its pillar. What an odd family. Mused Nezu to himself as he grinned as he watched the large screen waiting to see how things would unfold. Chapter 22. Part 2. Conference. Izuku blinked his eyes as the flashes of the camera had died down completely after having walked inside the building. He could already see Hei in letting out a sigh of relief, probably because she was extremely nervous with the attention that she was receiving from the public, but his presence along with the others was enough to keep her strong in front of the public. They really can't blame her or anyone if they become nervous, not everyone is lucky enough to have a system that is practically rebuilding a person from the ground. Izuku had to painfully admit that he probably would have been frozen in the spot if he were to have been thrown into something of this magnitude before he gained the system. The only thing he could do for his fiancée at the time was to use his aura to divert the attention from her, while intimidating anyone who got a bright idea to comment about her in any lewd way that could get Hei unconscious about herself. Since his mana had a very unique smell to it that is capable of calming down Hei in, he had been releasing his mana almost constantly towards her, which made her forget that she was in public. Still, Izuku had to do something about Hei in nervousness when it comes to public, so he will try to prepare her to the best of his abilities, even though he wasn't the best example out there due to lacking in common sense. Bunny didn't say anything so far after they got inside the building, the smile on his face was a clear indication that they have made him proud with how they handled everything so far. Gunny walked towards the stage at a normal pace being accompanied by two of his bodyguards which he didn't really need them, but he was a high-ranking official, so he needed security with him. Excuse me. A deep voice had broken them from their thoughts as they looked at an agent standing at the side with a professional look. The agent was obviously wearing the standard uniform which was a black suit with black glasses for some odd reason, and an earpiece that would allow him to easily communicate with the other agents around the place. I'm the one assigned to lead you backstage, if you please follow me. Said the agent in a polite tone as the hunters nodded their heads and followed him. 
Nobody said a word, merely everyone stuck to their groups or rather their partners, either because that's the only people they knew on a personal level, or rather they were comfortable with their partners. The agent had been taking a lot of twists and turns around the building before he stopped in front of a double door. We've arrived at our destination. Said the agent as he fully opened the door revealing the backstage which had several equipment and a lot of empty spaces. A lot of backstage workers were going about their own business making sure that everything was prepared for the event. Please walk inside and await further instructions from your supervisor. Said the agent politely as the hunters acknowledged his words before walking inside. Once fully inside, the double door had closed behind them as they navigated through the backstage and found Jinchil who was giving out orders to the workers and was reviewing and checking everything, but everyone can see the clear eye bags. You look quite stressed, have you been sleeping? Choi was the one to initiate the conversation after they reached the man who in turn had looked at them. Sleeping is pointless by this point, you kids only have to walk out and say a few words to the public, and that's just it, but I have to prepare the stage and make sure that everything is going smoothly, so your first day at the spotlight wouldn't go downhill. Said Jinchil letting out a sigh as everyone understood where he was coming from. It must have been hard on you, I assure you that I will do well to impress the audience. Godo spoke either out of arrogance or confidence, Jinchil simply didn't have time to come up with a snarky remark or say anything instead he gave a nod acknowledging his words, but he was placing his hopes more so on Izuku's group. I hope so or those sleepless nights would be for nothing. Said Jinchil with a tired tone while Godo smirked with confidence and glanced at Izuku, expecting him to react to his declaration and try to challenge him, but Izuku didn't even react to his words or even glance at his direction, making him slightly frown. Was he being ignored? The mere thought that he was being ignored is the equivalent of being looked down upon, and he hated being ignored, since his words were enough to get him praises even from those that share the same rank as him, because among the S rank he was one of the exceptional few aside from Izuku Midoriya and Cha Hei In. He resolved to show Izuku Midoriya that he is strong, and the boy will have to acknowledge him as a rival. Sometimes words are not enough since words without strength are empty, but rather a demonstration of your own strength is enough to show that your words hold weight. Now that you're all here, we have a space for you to relax and have a few drinks and snacks to entertain yourself. There will be a screen there where you can watch the opening of the conference before you are called to come upstage, although we will have you prepare 5 to 10 minutes before you're called upstage. Jinchil explained the rules to the future hunters of Japan. Is there any question? Jinchil asked, praying silently that they wouldn't assault him with questions. Luckily, none of them had any questions to ask which made him feel relieved. Nah, I think we're all good Mr. Jinchil. Said Yunho with a smile practically speaking for himself and his group of friends, while the others silently agreed to his words. No comment. Said Godo hoping to make his voice heard once more, nobody paid him mind which did annoy him a little, but he was determined to get the others to acknowledge him. I'm glad to hear, now head to the corner of the backstage. Said Jinchil pointing at the direction of the space where they will rest until they are called to come up on stage. The hunters immediately headed to the corner of the backstage to prepare themselves mentally for the event that will be aired around Japan. Ani let out a sigh, he stood behind a podium which had several mix with several news company insignia. He was arranging his papers which had his speech written on it to make sure that nothing was missing, he didn't exactly need it, but this was just for formality. Some of the important VIP guests had already been granted access to the theater in which he will be doing his speech. A lot of them were made out of very influential people in the country who support Japan with their donation, along with a few important pro heroes. Among the VIP guests were the Aoi Rozu CEO who came accompanied by his wife. Both of them occupied their own seats in the upper floor for their own safety, watching with interest, mainly because the Aoi Rozu had great deal of respect for Gunny. The other notable figure was Yu Myingan, who is half Japanese and half Korean hence his Korean name. He came to Japan and became the chairman of the Yujin Construction, a very powerful company in the country of Japan that closely rivals the Aoi Rozu. He was also accompanied by his wife both interested in seeing the ones whom their son was working for. Aside from the VIP guests that came, there were only the security agents that were making sure to maintain the safety of Gunny and the guests. The other normal citizens and reporters are going through a security checkup to make sure that there are no attempts at Gunny life which is unlikely to happen, but there were also the VIP guests. Dinchil had a look of annoyance as he walked towards the chairman, no doubt the reporters were getting impatient from anticipation. It was obvious that they were excited to see Gunny who rarely ever made an appearance on the news, unlike his former colleagues in the Hero Association, who jump at the opportunity to increase their standing in the country, while brainwashing a lot of people with their honey words of bringing peace, but really, they just wanted to maintain the status quo. Aside from that, Izuku and the others had definitely left an impression on the many news reporters who came today for this event, that will be recorded in the history books, as the day the hunters were born. 
all of the current reporters had unconsciously realized that today's event is going to be centered around those powerful looking teens, and they wanted to know who they are. Their curiosity was eating away from them, which is why it was obvious that they were quite impatient. Then again they've been waiting since the morning to get their seats so they couldn't be fully blamed. After all, the news industry is all about who is the fastest at delivering news, than their rival news channel. Those reporters get paid quite good money and are given a promotion if they can get more views for the news company they're working for. This is why people often call them parasites, given that in each crisis, you'd find them all swarming around. Like that female news reporter of HNA who despite being a new rookie in the news industry, she has found everywhere that some had speculated that she may have a quirk that gives her an additional seven senses when something big happens. Her quirk still remains a mystery to the people of Japan, since it was never made public. Everything is done sir. Jinchil said with a hint of annoyance at having to calm down those parasitic news reporters. Gunny pitied him, but at the same time appreciated Jinchil's sacrifice, no doubt he was aware how difficult it is to deal with the media, who are determined to get a new scope, which is why he tried to keep his involvement when it comes to the media very limited. Thank you. Said Gunny with a smile as Jinchil scratched the back of his head before letting out a sigh. He was glad to have an understanding boss to work under. No doubt, his life would have been a living hell if he was under someone like the Madam President, who would probably be unsatisfied with his work and punish him for it just like what they did with Kaina when she showed a hint of defiance. They should be getting in now, we're still letting them enter in small groups so that they don't stampede over here and make too much of a scene than we can handle. We don't want to fight breaking out already. Said Jinchil which Gunny nodded his head at. It was obvious that when it comes to news reporters, letting all of them here at once would cause too much trouble for a lot of people. Despite them all being part of the same news industry, news reporters aren't exactly very friendly with each other, it wouldn't be a surprise to see two rival news reporters duking it out in the open with words which can often lead to it becoming a very heated physical confrontation that only add flames to the news and is exploited by other reporters to stay relevant. The worst thing about this is that rarely those news reporters get punished for it because most of them can afford to pull stunts like this because they're quite aware that they're very important for the news company they work for. Beside, those conflicts that often happen are only done to spark controversy on the internet that is beneficial for the company, due to many people loving to see conflicts. This is why Jinchil was tired as hell, he had too many things he needed to do, and waking up to news reporters literally camping outside the place just to be the first inside to deliver news was already irritating. He had to stop some of the bold ones from walking in like they own the place. As much as he wanted to use force to get those annoying parasites away from the scene, it is undeniable that they're needed. Today is a day where the hunters would make history. It would be counterproductive if he were to get angry at the more use force to get them to listen. Heroes might be powerful individuals greatly loved and respected by the people, but the most fearsome thing in this world is the media outlet. Thus by tweaking their words, they could either spark a conflict or get people to be more accepting. Even the higher ups in the Hero Association are aware of this, which is why they're very dangerous, because they exploit the media to maintain the status quo and line their pockets continuously with money which they got from the ignorant masses that follows them like a lost puppy. Ginchil was mostly concerned about Izuku the most, it wasn't a secret that Izuku lacked common sense. For instance, Izuku mostly ignored everything that isn't related to his family, friends or anything that remotely interests him. He could be interviewed by news reporters, but he would brush them aside, which could cause problems for Izuku. Even if Izuku can brute force his way in, being made public enemy would only bring harm to his family and friends, or make him unpopular among the public-like Endeavor who made more enemies than fans. Izuku is the type of person who'd probably try to shoo the media away, which is definitely a bad move to make. He just hopes that Izuku will remain mostly shut until he is called to make a small speech which they have already written for him and made to rehearse it before coming here. Jinchil prayed that this event would end quickly without any trouble. Yubuki, did your brother appear already? Inko asked from the kitchen as she was making drinks and a small meal, so that she and Fubuki could kick back and relax, as they watched their brother's son make history on live television. Nope, not yet. Said Fubuki lazily as she watched a news reporter standing in front of the building, giving small commentary with some reporters, getting into conspiracy theories about what today's events mean, which only added more stress on Inko who was getting worried. Um, I think they're going to start since some of the reporters are making their way inside the building. Fubuki said as she quickly adjusted herself on the couch, although a little reluctantly, because Inko had already made her way to the living area with the snacks and drinks. Izuku. Hey in. Said Inko worriedly uttering the name of her son and her daughter-in-law. Despite her new healthy lifestyle after getting to the gym, she was still the same Inko who worried over her son all those years ago. Yubuki was already taking a handful of the popcorn before stuffing her mouth with it, much to Inko's dismay. 
Fubuki wasn't the least bit worried about her big brother and her new sister, because they're already powerful, and it wasn't like she was weak. Aren't you worried? Asked Inko as she gave a worried look towards her daughter who was uncaringly slurping a drink while holding her phone on the other hand. Inko could already guess that her daughter was texting one of her besties, probably making a joke or sharing memes. Nah. Was the answer that she got from Fubuki who didn't even look up from her phone, making Inko frown a little. Social media is already corrupting the new generation. Inko thought as she let out a tired sigh. She remembers the old days when they used those old Nokia phones that had the power to shatter a concrete floor. Inko couldn't help but chuckle at the memory of Mitsuki grabbing her Nokia phone and throwing it at someone's face, which gave the poor guy a fractured skull and a broken nose. Inko also remembers how Mitsuki tried to convince her to use her quirk on her Nokia phone to increase its velocity and throw it on someone's face to see how hurt they would be. Luckily, she decided to first try it on an abandoned building and accidentally brought it down to the ground, and ever since then, Mitsuki had been rolling on the ground from laughter, while Linko was disturbed because that should have killed someone, but Mitsuki didn't care at the time. Um, are you thinking about something mom? Fubuki asked as she took her eyes off the phone and looked at her mother who was daydreaming. Oh oh, no, I'm okay. Just remembered something. Said Inko with an embarrassed smile from being caught daydreaming. Whatever you say, mom. Anyways, I think they're about to start. Said Fubuki as she directed her gaze at the TV showing the last of the news reporters making their way inside the building, while Gunny stood at the podium with his grandfatherly smile. Inko began to worry once more as she fidgeted around nervously which Fubuki easily noticed and let out a sigh. Grabbing one of the drinks, she immediately pushed it towards her mother who took the drink and started to drink slowly. They're going to be okay, mom. Something like this wouldn't bring my awesome big brother and my amazing big sister down. Besides, I doubt the Hunter Association wouldn't have already prepared for every scenario that may happen today. All big brother and big sister will have to do is say what they have rehearsed for the past few weeks. Said Fubuki which somewhat eased Inko worries. It's just that this is going to be Izuku and Hei In's first debut in the limelight. I'm just worried that the media may be hard on them. Said Inko with worry while Fubuki still slurped her drink undeterred by her mother's words. Isn't this why the chairman is here today? I doubt he would allow them to harass them this early on. Said Fubuki, she knew even without Hei and or Izuku telling her that gun he would be answering any questions directed at Izuku and the others. You're right, I need to have faith in the two of them to succeed. Said Inko trying to alleviate her worries, she somewhat managed to calm down herself by eating a little of the food which Yubuki had to resist the urge to slap her mother's hand. This is how Inko got fat, whenever she got stressed about her or Izuku, she would then stuff her face with food. Her mother had just recently gotten good looking for her age, and a lot of people had come flirting with her or trying to strike a conversation with her. A shame that Inko was either accompanied by her or Mitsuki, the two of them had very colorful words to say to Inko admirers. I won't be handing mom over to anyone that isn't dad. I'm sure big bro will be on my side and agree to this. Thought Fubuki as she imagined her cool older brother frigid stare as he disposed of another body, while she stood by his side lighting a match and burning the body to get rid of any evidence that would incriminate them, as she would then cackle evilly in the night. Fubuki continued to slurp her drink as she discreetly looked at her mother who looked stunningly beautiful for her age. Fubuki imagined some shady looking guy seducing their mother and then leaving her heartbroken which made her very angry and it reinforced her earlier imagination. As the best girl, I won't allow those ruffians to sway mom with their weak shit. Mom doesn't need a man in her life, she only needs us. Must protect mom at all costs. Thought Fubuki with determination in her eyes. All those years of watching YouTube and those drama movies had made her immune to any form of flirting. It reached a point that she developed another sense where she'd know when someone is trying to get in her pants or is genuinely enamored by her. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.